This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I have another interesting case uh, for all of us. So this is an elderly lady who presents with a phacolytic glaucoma. She has hypermature cataract morganion. Posted for surgery, the plan is to do a manual small incision cataract surgery uh, because I'm not expecting a very healthy bag. The nucleus would be mobile. Now, I'm just fast forwarding these routine steps so that we get to the interesting part. The tunnel is created, uh, the rexis is done. The rexis is done now and I need to extract the nucleus out. Since it's free floating, just with the irrigating fluid of my cannula, the nucleus is floated up into the anterior chamber and then by pressing the posterior lip, the nucleus is pushed out of the eye. At this moment, I am puzzled by the appearance inside the eye. There's a large chunk of uh, lens matter in my left hand side and I'm going in with my irrigation cannula. At the outset, it looks like it is much more posterior and as I continue to irrigate, nothing happens. It doesn't seem to be getting dislodged and at this point, I realize that there is something abnormal. This lens matter is not in the capsule bag, but it is behind the posterior capsule. So it took a couple of seconds for me to appreciate this fact. As I'm trying to irrigate out, you can see that the waves which you are seeing are of the OVD. At this stage still, I'm not sure whether the posterior capsule is intact or not. I'm gingerly moving in with my irrigation cannula to just try to get a hint. So what I'm seeing is a blue dye which is there in the burger space mixed with some of the lens matter. And peculiarly, the lens matter is towards the left hand side. So in Morgagnon long-standing cataracts with phacolytic glaucoma, we see that the lens matter does have a tendency to percolate across an intact posterior capsule into the burger space. I have had many such encounters in the past. But this case was peculiar in the sense that the lens matter is situated in particular location that is to the left hand corner. Now, usually I see in the central visual area but here yes, it was different. The presence of the blue dye around the vicinity of these lens particles also suggested that the fluid has got direct access transonularly. So maybe uh, we have access to the posterior segment of the eye across the zonules. That is uh, something which we expect in these uh, long-standing cataracts with loose zonules. Uh, now at this point, my diagnosis is that it is the lens matter which has percolated through an intact posterior capsule simply because I am not able to locate any posterior capsule as such now. Now we have these large chunks of epinucleus and cortex in the burger space, how to deal with it? One option would be just to just leave it there and allow them to get absorbed over a period of time. But I would prefer to deal with this in the current setting itself simply because when we leave them back, there is a persistent inflammation and raised IOP which continues for a few more weeks. Of course we can control them medically but I would prefer to deal with it in the current situation itself. So to deal with an lens matter in the burger space, my approach is always going to be through the past planar region. So I'm measuring 3.5 mm from the limbus using a caliper and using a MVR blade, a stab incision is created through the sclera. And to the sclerotomy, I'm going to introduce my vitrectomy cutter. The infusion is going to be from my anterior root itself uh, because I presume that uh, there would be some amount of communication through the vitreous cavity through the transanular barrier. At this stage, I'm not sure about the presence or absence of the posterior capsule tear. So I want to preserve the posterior capsule and I'm doing the antivitrectomy. So the fundamental prerequisite for is to ensure that our port of the cutter is never facing sideways or anteriorly. I want the port to be always kept posteriorly facing the optic disc. Uh, so that I don't inadvertently catch the posterior capsule. That is the whole principle which I want to follow. And let us see how things turn out. So as the cutter is begun, initially I don't find anything moving, but at certain point there is, seems to be a snap. And this probably looks like the antihyloid membrane is now ruptured. And now we, we can see that the cutting and the aspiration uh, of the contents in the burger space is happening. 
Also, I can notice that the fluid has now got a communication through the, the vitreous cavity from the anterior root itself. Now, again at this stage, I can see a wavy membrane appearing in front of my port, suggesting that the posterior capsule is still intact. And uh, it takes a couple of minutes for me to just keep on waiting for all the lens matter to get cut and aspirated. There's one thing which I want all of you to appreciate is that uh, look at the position of the port. Uh, it is facing posteriorly and it's not moving around. It is held steady at one place. And if at all I want to go to a different place, it's done in a very gradual manner. At this stage, still I can see the wavy membrane anterior to my cutter, which is suggesting that the posterior capsule is still intact. But at this stage, I am noticing a line on my left hand side uh, near the equator of the capsule bag. It seems to be clear cut demarcation line suggesting an equatorial posterior capsule tear existing. I'm not sure when it happened or was it pre existing at this stage. And I need to turn my port slightly to attack the area, this quadrant of the lens matter. And this looks like a thickened cortex and epinucleus which is stuck in this area. And I'm still perplexed by the location of the posterior capsule tear. I'm not sure it is induced iatrogenically and maybe it was pre-existing simply because if we can recall, the lens matter was also sticking on in this area itself corresponding to the area of the posterior capsule tear. So eventually the lens matter is cleared and I'm not still sure about the origin of this posterior capsule tear. Uh, nevertheless, the lens matter is now almost totally cleared. Now time to implant the lens. Now before implanting the lens, I just like to, I'm pondering now whether should I leave the posterior capsule as it is or no because uh, with this large tear, I'm unlikely to have a secure in the black positioning of the lens. So my option is to go ahead and place the multi-piece lens in the sulcus itself. So I'm going in through my limbal root and I'm trying to cut and remove uh, the lens matter which was in the far periphery. And once it is done, I'm now sure that I don't want to keep the posterior capsule in this visual axis. So I'm going to use the cutter itself to trim the posterior capsule so that the visual axis is cleared off. So now we have a very clear visual axis and there's no lens matter as well. So time to place the intraocular lens into the sulcus. I'm going to use the sodium hyaluronate to create some space. The planned multi-piece lens is being placed into the sulcus. Both the haptics are now dialed in. The OVD which is behind the lens is again cleared off using the cutter. And with the irrigation in my left hand, the optic is pushed down to achieve the optic capture. So now we have a well-centered lens which is trapped in the rexus margin. The ovalization of rexus margin confirms it. Time to close. The sclerotomy is closed with the 8 vicryl sutures and then the conjunctiva is closed. The side ports are hydrated, intracranial antibiotics are placed and that's it, the case is done. So let's try to answer the million dollar question now. How did the lens matter get in the burger space and how did the PC tear occur? So let us go back and rewind this video. At this stage, the nucleus is still in the bag. It is prolapsed out of the bag into the antechamber and then by just passive expression, the nucleus is burped out. As the nucleus is being burped out, let us lean so motion. By this time, the lens matter is already located in the same area, suggesting that it is already present there. But at this stage, we're not sure whether the PC is intact or not. But the lens matter is definitely in the position. The next question. As the irrigating cannula just gets into the antechamber, as I'm assessing whether uh, the PC is intact or not, there is a momentary jerk which I feel, but nothing significant. Maybe this was the stage at which the communication between the anterior chamber and the burger space was evident, but at this stage I still cannot appreciate the posterior capsule tear. 
So momentary fluctuation in the chamber does indicate that the PC tear would have already been pre-existing but I can't see it. Now did it happen while performing anti vitrectomy? So as you can notice the vitrector is introduced and it's always placed in the central 3mm. I rewinded and observed the position of the vitrector at every step of the surgery it was never in the left hand corner it was always in the central area and it was facing posteriorly as the lens matter and the surrounding vitreous got cut and aspirated then during the fluctuation of the chamber I began appreciating this peripheral PC tear it was way in the periphery maybe in the equator we don't know so after viewing multiple times I was pretty sure that it doesn't seem to be a likelihood that the vitrector has gotten and induced this posterior capsule tear. So went back and saw the other step. The rexus is intact. The nucleus delivery was a traumatic. Still, I couldn't figure out when and how did the PC tear happen. So anyway, in such situations, a past plan approach is a good way to deal with the lens matter. And obviously, with the rexus intact, we can always place the lens in the sulcus and achieve an optic capture. So please let me know what you think about this case and uh, write down your thoughts in the comments below. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.